This webinar today has to do with what we call custom job templates. And, and I, if you've ever taken a class with me, I always start with well, the very first thing we cover, whether it's an advanced class or a beginning class, we cover the setup part of the program. Because there's a lot of things in the setup that affect the way you use the program. So the idea here is you can have one global master setup, but then you can also do the same thing for particular types of jobs. So let me just jump in. Again, don't hesitate to ask questions here. Just jump in anywhere along the way if you got a question. So under the settings part of the program, there's default settings for job. We call it commercial, but it could be whatever your normal uh, type of work is. So one of the things you can set up under the job allocation is you, if you want to default for overhead, if you want to default for profit, most people have a default for sales tax, whatever their local rate is. And more importantly, under job settings, under extensions, there's defaults for your labor rates. So what you typically want to set up here is your typical crew. It could have two different categories of workers like this one does, or it could have a half a dozen or more. But you want to set up your typical crew mix here. And the idea of the custom templates is we can have a different setup automatically in place for different types of jobs. Uh, the examples I'm going to use here today are industrial and multifamily residential, but it could be anything. If you've got some little niche, maybe it's uh, some type of manufacturing, some type of other specialty that you've gotten into. I know got a lot of customers who just do grocery stores or do a lot of grocery stores. So the idea would be they could have a setup for that in addition to their commercial one. The other thing in this setup is a little bit to do with the takeoff. And that's under settings, default settings for takeoff commercial. So every takeoff module in EBM has its own setup. So for example, when you open up branch circuits, these are the standard default settings. Half inch EMT, number 12 wire, expanded, set screw steel fittings down the ways here for connectors and couplings. So the idea here is under each of these tabs, you would set your standard preferences. So what you do for, and I forgot one thing back in the default settings, really important. Settings, default settings, job, commercial. Again, these are just the standard defaults. Under extensions, over to the left here, you'll see that the price column for is target for material and column two for labor. Again, those are pretty typical defaults. Target is the lower price that comes out of Epic, typically pretty close to your cost of material, maybe with a little bit of cushion. Same thing on column two, maybe there's a little bit of cushion on the labor hours, but it's a competitive number I think most people feel comfortable with for commercial work, new commercial work. Not little small tenant improvements, certainly not a big industrial job like a wastewater treatment plant or something. That's a whole different world. So before we go on to the the templates, just one more thing. There are defaults for change orders. So the defaults are really another type of custom template that only apply to change orders. So over here under extensions, you'll see the default on the price column of trade price and the default on labor's column three. I'm going to show you how to set up a, another option that's not even on this list, maybe for industrial work in just a minute. Same thing on direct labor rates. Typically, customers will have a different hourly rate for change orders than they do for bidding jobs. The, the, again, the change orders is more about what you can charge, what you can justify, rather than your actual cost. So these templates are kind of a way of going somewhere in between. So what I've done here is I've created a job here called industrial sample templates. So when I go to the settings, this time I'm going to go to the job settings. And under job allocation, I've put a standard overhead of 15%, a standard profit of 10. And under job settings, under extensions, under direct labor rates, I've got higher hourly rates than I do for commercial work. And I've got a different crew mix. I've got it with all foremen and all journeymen. So maybe on your industrial jobs, you use less, if any, 
apprentices or helpers. So it's just a way of quickly having a, a setup that applies to your industrial jobs and not having to take the time or more importantly, maybe not having to remember to change the, the settings when you're in the job, which you can certainly do, but you know, it takes, obviously takes time. So in the takeoff settings for industrial, what I've done is this. Takeoff settings. And we don't have to look at every screen here. You can review them on your own. But so for an industrial job, I've got my default on the conduit set to three quarter inch rigid. Same thing on feeders, I defaulted it to rigid. Some people default it to PVC coated. Those are typically the two most common for for industrial jobs. Doesn't limit your choices, of course, when you're in the takeoff. It just gives you a quicker running start when you get into that takeoff module. So what, let me show you one more setup of, of uh, multifamily, and then I'll show you how it works when you set up a job. And actually, there's one more thing I did. Under the industrial setup job, I went down to reports and job extensions. Okay, we have to actually take off an item just to see this. We'll just take off one foot of conduit. So when I go to reports and job extensions now, I set the default of my industrial jobs to 50% factor on top of column two. I didn't want to go all the way to column three. Column three is almost double column two. But again, I've got that saved as a standard factor. So when I create an industrial job, the idea is I copy this template job. I don't, uh, I don't just create a regular new job. So before I do that, I'm gonna take this item out of the job. And while you're thinking about this, another way to do this is actually, you know, to go back to a, a special job that you did where you changed all the settings, make a copy of it and just delete the takeoff from the audit drill. That would become your template. So before we use that template feature, just let me show you what I did under the multifamily residential. So this is kind of the other end of the spectrum, probably a little more competitive, a little more, uh, a little tighter numbers that you want to use on a multifamily job. So under the default settings job, even though it's commercial, it's really not. I didn't mean to go to default settings. I want to go to the job settings. So under job allocation, I've got just 10% overhead and 5% profit. Again, this is for multifamily residential. And then under job settings, extensions. I left the price of material at target, the labor at column two. You know, some of you might want to think about dropping that a little bit. Multifamily residential is probably a best case scenario for productivity, but again, that depends on the job. I've seen some multifamily residential jobs that were, you know, not real straightforward. And under direct labor rates, I've got a different crew mix. I've got half electricians and half helpers with lower rates, maybe that kind of thing. So if I'm going to create an industrial job now, here's how it works. Instead of going to job file and new, I go to job file and come down here to copy. I'm going to copy the industrial sample template and I'll call it uh, ABC pump station. And then you just hit copy down here at the bottom and it creates a copy of that sample template job. And then you go to open. You open the uh, job I just created here. And now when I go into the takeoff for branch circuits, for example, I've got the three quarter inch rigid conduit as the default. Similar thing if I go to feeders. Rigid conduit. Locked out some bushings and that kind of thing for the fittings. 
Again, you can do that through all the takeoff modules. Those are the three that probably going to take most effect. In the motor hookups here, I believe I defaulted it to steel tight instead of, uh, yeah, liquid tight instead of steel or aluminum flex. I don't know if you know, we recently added, I see a question there, I'll come get it in a second. We recently added uh, uh, stainless steel conduit and fittings and all kinds of material to the database. So if, if that's one of your types of work, you can set up a, a, a sample template job for stainless steel jobs. So again, if I make an entry here, 100 feet of pipe, oh, that's the wrong place. I don't want a 100 foot motor connection. I'll go with 100 feet of pipe, throw in some elbows, take off. So now when I go to job extension, the default, again, from my custom template, is to add 50% to column two. This takes a lot of the, the potential for error out of it. You know, think it through one time real thoroughly. What kind of things do I do on that kind of a job? Let's do one more example. This is a little bit of a weird thing, Matt. I'll show you just so everybody else knows. Under help, we have what we call help videos. And I don't know if they fixed this yet, but if you go down to advanced, there's one, oh, it's here now. They fixed it. The, this, the word attributes wasn't here before. Watch that video. I think it's five to six, maybe seven or eight minutes long. That'll tell you about how you add items to the drop-down menus. It's probably the most challenging thing uh, in, in the program as far as mastering or modifying the database. But uh, take a look at that video. And then if we need help to help you after that, we can. Also, the, like I said, there will be another webinar this month, later this month on the database uh, topic. That's one of the things we cover in that in that webinar. Okay, so I've taken off 100 feet of pipe. I'm going to go to job extension. You already saw that the default is to add 50% to labor. So let's just do a quick little example for a multifamily residential. So again, instead of new, I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to copy my multifamily residential template. Down here at the bottom, I'm going to put a name. I don't get too creative here. ABC Apartments. And then you just hit copy at the bottom right. And then is it, click it. There we go. So once you've copied the job, you just go to open. There's the ABC apartments. So what I did here in the takeoff, under the cable takeoff, I defaulted it to Romex instead of MC cable like it is in the commercial version. So you've got your regular non-metallic Romex here. You also can do UF cable, and there's also service entrance cable in here, but I set the default to to, to Romex because that's usually the, the way the, at least the apartment parts of the job are wired on multifamily residential. Again, you could have a default for multifamily residential with conduit and one of the, with the, an MC cable and another one for, for Romex. When you start the job, you kind of pick the one you need and go from there. So I think that's about it. It's a pretty simple little topic here today. Let me take another look for questions. Let's see another one we'll try. Uh, Michael, I just activated your audio. Let's see if it works. Go ahead. Uh, can you hear me, Talk Brian? To... I can. We're good. All right. Um, yeah, quick question now. Is there a way that you can group the templates away from the rest of the job files? Because I know I have a ton in there. You know what you could do is this. You could set up those template jobs under a different user. And then when you come into this to the job screen, there's a little button at the bottom to filter by user. Oh, nice. So just set up a dummy user, call it, you know, yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, call it templates, perfect. And then um, you just go filter by user and pull up that list. Is there a way when you're in there, that list to like old job files and stuff to delete them easily? Like del delete multiple ones at one time or is that something you have to do one by one? 
you can do that from the delete option. Here you can do as many jobs as you want. Oh, Just okay. So in there I, okay. <laughs> I figured that I was playing with that a couple weeks ago and I figured I just had a click down one. We are adding some extra functionality to this part of the takeoff. Here's, here's what I didn't even know about. You can decide what is in this display by right clicking and showing, hitting show hide columns. Then you can check the ones you want. Nice. <laughs> kind of embarrassing. Ah. Many pro years I've been using the program, didn't know about that feature. <laughs> and then we're, we're, we're adding some fields here too. So you'll be able to choose even more. Uh, and actually just kind of a little bit of a preview. They'll, and then once we do that, we're going to tie it to a, a bit analysis module that you'll be able to go in and compare one or more jobs just to see, you know, how the, uh, you know, what percentage of the job maybe was material, what percent of the job was labor, just some general comparisons, subcontracts and that kind of thing. We've had some people asking to be able to do that without having to set up their own little spreadsheet for that. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. That's a big help. I like that idea with the uh, the user because I think that's what I'm going to do is create one under uh, template. Perfect. Good question, Michael. Thanks. Thank you.